you have a cell phone, if you could please silence your cell phone. Take a moment to do that, please. So as we know, our board of directors, our board of directors approved moving forward with the strategic planning initiative with the hiring of Copling, Keebler, and Wallace, leading consulting firm in the private club industry. And before I introduce our speaker today, uh, I would like to recognize our Glen Eagle Strategic Planning Committee. And if you're here, if you're not already standing, you could stand and be recognized. Committee members Don York, Bruce Davis up there, Milo Harrison, Jerry Ingenthron, and Sutton, our co chairs, Susan Callahan, and Becky McIntosh, who's out of town, and our board liaisons to the Strategic Planning Committee, Carol Hoffman, and Rich Lee, our president. Thank you. Now it's my pleasure to introduce to you Jack Sullivan with Copland, Keebler, and Wallace. You know, Jack's, I'll tell you a little bit about Jack Sullivan. His career spans over 40 years in the club industry. He was the general manager years ago at Nicola Golf Club in Madison, Wisconsin, from the Wisconsin area. He then became general manager at Rose Point Yacht Club in Michigan and for 15 years. And during his tenure there, Gross Point was selected as the number one yacht club in the country three times while he was there. So then Jack moved down here. And he was no more winners. <laughs> he was the general manager at Bay Colony Golf Club, which many of you are familiar with. Then he was hired away from there by the Collier family, went to work for Collier Enterprises as Vice President of Operations and General Manager of both the Old Collier Golf Club and Hamilton Harbor Yacht Club. Jack actually built Hamilton Harbor Yacht Club. Well, this is very good. Jack served as National President for the Club Managers Association of America. That's a big honor in 1992. Eight years later, he was honored as Club Manager of the Year by Club Management Magazine in the year 2000. And very few of our CMA colleagues have that distinction to have been a president and been Club Manager of the Year. They pick one individual each year in the country and the world as Club Manager of the Year. Jack Sullivan was that. So as a consulting executive specializing in strategic planning, Jack has experience with strategic planning in several local clubs. He's uh, done it at the Dunes, at Palmera, at Twin Eagles, at Fiddlesticks, Quail West, Cypress Woods, down the Boulevard, Countryside, Naples Heritage, and Eagle Creek. And nationally, some clubs that I'm sure you're familiar with, the Atlanta Athletic Club, Shell Creek in Alabama, Oak Hill in Rochester, New York, and Sardress Country Club in Ponte Vedra, Florida. Jack, it's a great honor to have you with us today. And please join me in welcoming Jack Sullivan. Thank you very much, John. Quite frankly, all that means is for 40 years, I, I did the same thing that John does, and that Peter has done, and uh, what I do get to do is to understand clubs, and I get to visit with clubs all over the world, and try to, try to borrow the best practice that we see so I can share it uh, with the clubs and communities that I work with. Uh, you know, this is our firm, Kaplan, Keebler, and Wallace. We've got over 200 years of experience and I am director of strategic planning. That's my main focus. Uh, although I've done some placement, which is how the firm was started, my main focus is working on clubs and communities like yours, 
uh, in helping to, quite frankly, take the best practice from business and put it to work in, in the private club community. Now, and just think about that for a second. Is it a private club, really a business? And let's take, let's take Lenny for a minute. And whether it's a seven or eight million dollar overall operational budget, what about the 300 million in assets that your community has with all your homes? So having a good business plan, a good strategic plan is, is a, a great thing to have. And I can go back 30 years ago where SOP and clubs met seat of the pants. What are we gonna do today? Where today, fortunately, 70% of clubs have an active strategic plan. So what I'd like to do is just spend the next 20 minutes just giving you some highlights. I know there's not enough copies. It's great to have so many people here. The, the uh, presentation that you see uh, today will be on your website tomorrow, so you'll be able to make copies. Uh, I urge you to take them. And if uh, you have friends that weren't here, share them. Uh, because I'm going to give you two sayings right at the beginning. My two favorite sayings are the purpose of a plan is not just to produce a plan and go through all this exercise, it's to produce results. And in a private club community, the best process is a good strategic plan is more than the board or management's plan. It has to be the entire community's plan. So I'm glad to see such a great turnout today because you'll hear me encouraging you to participate in the process over the next five or six months. So uh, again, I, as John said, I've worked with clubs all over, uh, literally all over the world lately. I've been in Singapore and, and Peru uh, recently, uh, just a list of some of these clubs. So what have I learned? What have we Let me just set the, the tone, because what I'd like Share some of that with you and then take you through the process in a club and then share with you the process that we will use here. With such a large group, please hold your questions till the end because the presentation will only take about 20 minutes. And then we'll have plenty of time for questions. And if you're bashful, I'll stick around and you can come up and see me afterwards. So, all right, so what have we learned? What are some of the trends that we see? In, in this industry, and you know, the good news is we've recovered. We really, uh, private club communities are doing well again. And some of the things we see are the changes. Change is inevitable. And uh, you know, how many of us had just an old flip phone 15 years ago, where today we can't live without it, right? Uh, look at you know, look at the discussion we have, particularly here in Southwest Florida, about denim. You know, but uh, I'm I'm a good example. I never wore jeans before. I travel all over the world. I travel in jeans because it's, it's what we see. Um, again, just traditions are important, but we're evolving and to make sure that the, the community stays relevant. We have to understand them. That doesn't mean we do everything that everybody else is doing. But we understand what's important to you. And that is an important part of the strategic planning process. Look at what casual dining. Uh, we have clubs now that literally have Starbucks right in the right, a Starbucks office, right, a uh, business office right in right in the uh, clubhouse. And uh, it's it's not, when we say casual, it doesn't mean lower quality. You know, it's not fast food. It's just a more casual environment. That's why we live in Florida, right? Uh, it also, gentlemen, I hate to tell Greatest growth in golf is women and junior. And I understand you have one of the largest nine hole groups in, in Collier County. So go, go, go get them, ladies. It is what we see happening. Remember this word, and that's why I'm so glad that you're all here. Engagement. For a club and a club community to be successful. The members and residents have to be engaged with everything that is going on. National Golf Foundation actually has the statistic that says there's a 75% greater chance of retaining a membership if both spouses play golf. I don't disagree with that. But I tell you, as long as both spouses 
are engaged, involved in the club. Maybe one plays tennis, they say, it's my club. That's what we want to see. We also want to make sure that we provide quality, variety, but also at a good value. And a value, value is all also always in the eyes of the beholder. You heard some of the clubs I, I work with. No, you're not an old car. You're, you're not a player. But, you know, you're a plain eagle, but still it needs to be a value for you. And the quality needs to be commensurate for So it's we successful club communities. So let me talk just for a minute about strategic planning. What it really is is a blend. It's a balance between looking at the operational issues of the club that are driven by the strategic issues. And I'm going to take you through those in just a minute. But it's also not about emotion. Gee, I think so. It's about fact. It's, it's about data. And one of the things we will be doing with this process is asking your opinion, not just, oh, I had a club president one time. I said, how are things going? He said, oh, they're going fine. I said, how do you know that? Oh, I asked my friends. <laughs> We're going to ask all of his friends how, how it's going and what your thoughts are. So please, you're going to have lots of opportunity to participate. And we'd really love to just have you. My favorite saying is, you know, from good old Alice in Wonderland. If you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. And hopefully it's not the yellow brick road. So that's what we're trying to do to develop a path. So what's the future going to look like, you know, for Glen Eagle five, 10, 15 years from now? So um, one, of, one of the best in class that we see with the club is a high level of strategic thinking and an active plan, not just one that sits on a shelf, but one that is reviewed on a regular basis, updated, and revised as, as necessary. So let me just take you through the, what planning and as I said earlier, strategic planning is what establishes the primary goals and objectives, and that drives the annual business plan, not the other way around. Okay, it's what you want to see here at strategically at uh, Glen Eagle that will drive the annual business plan. Things we consider is. It's that roadmap. It's it's the not the yellow brick road, but it's the roadmap, particularly in a private club community when boards and committees are constantly changing, gives you some continuity. It also, and a very important thing, it is not a capital plan. All right, don't think this is oh gosh, the bulldozers outside, they're ready to go. No, it's not a capital plan. But it drives the capital plan. If you do make changes, it's why you would make them because why? Because the residents and members have bought into it. They feel it's important. It's also who you are, what you do, who you serve. If you will, it's your brand. Who is that? Brand in the private club? No, if you go back 30 years ago, nobody ever talked about branding and private clubs. Do you know there are 170 private club communities in Lee and Collier County? And if you think branding isn't important, what's the differentiator? What's going to attract someone to Glen Eagle versus another type of club? And that's what helps, helps to uh, establish that. Uh, it's the basis for your marketing plan. Prepares you to manage change. Uh, and again, with, with the constant change with, with boards and committees, it's really about being proactive rather than reactive, not putting out fires, but we anticipate it that you know it's coming. Uh, first John, John, Peter, to me, it provides the management team with the best possible system you could have. It gives you very specific goals and objectives. Instead of every year, new president, new goal and objective. And the only the only downside of it, which I always tell all staff, you're going to be held accountable. But I don't know about you, I'd much rather be held accountable for something that's clearly defined than moving targets. So it really is an important part. 
It also helps us understand the overall objective and the reason we're here today. Um, and you're going to see this. We're starting with a town hall meeting. We'll end with a town hall meeting, sharing everything, getting everybody on, on the same page. Uh, it defines uh, short-term actions. And, you know, it, it's interesting. There are numerous clubs that I will walk into the front door from the boardroom, and the mission statement seems bronze on the wall. And somebody says, well, why are we doing this? Because it says so, and you all bought into it. So an important part of, of the process. And we talked about you, we talked about employees. It gets that buy-in together, where everybody's uh, hopefully on, on the same page. And interesting enough, during the uh, recession that we saw, uh, the great recession that we saw not, not all that long ago, the clubs and club communities who had a very good active plan, uh, they, they came through it pretty well. Why? Because we all know, just like right now, we've been on, we've been, been in this market for 10 years, something's going to happen, right? It's not a matter of if, when. You're, you're planned for it, you're prepared for it. Uh, and really, gives you a method for making very good decisions. And in my view, it's the top common denominator we find in the best clubs in the club communities. So I told you about my favorite saying, and that's really what this is all about. So what I'd like to do, tell you more about, as I said, it's not just a capital plan. Right? It's about all of these things. It's, a, it, it, it's about governance. It's about are your bylaws updated? I bought into a community down here. I bought the model 18 years ago. We're finally now getting around to changing our bylaws because the developer gave us the bylaws and, and they're not as relevant today. You know, do you have the right categories, uh, financial? Look at the change that is happening in, in, in demographics. Um, the average age of a club member or a club resident in Florida is between 68 and 70 years old. If that's the average age, that means we have numerous people in their 80s. I'm 70. There's a there's now the average age of a new resident in Florida is between 55 and 59. So between 80 and that, I, I like to use my son. He's 38 years old. He runs a big hotel on Miami Beach. We're in the same business. We have similar politics, religion, et cetera. That's where it stops because of that difference, there's a lot of differences. So this helps us understand, you know, the different demographics and what's important to the different residents of, of the community. We talked about brand and uh, tell me your name again, please. <laughs> tell me your name again. Wolfgang. Wolfgang asked me what sore and swap. Swap. Strengths weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So I was kind of that blue sky, thinking outside the box. Strengths, opportunities, aspirations, and again, my favorite word, results. These are all of the different things that we're going to be looking at during the strategic planning process. So, um, both McMahon Group, which uh, is one of my competitors, and then uh, a Northeastern uh, accounting firm, Condon Romero, these were the uh, top 25 things that every uh, well run club should have, and you can see what number one is. Strategic plan. So, okay, and here's, I, I love uh, this next one. I have a home up in Detroit, so I, I spend time in Michigan, and you're going to say to me, what in the heck does automotive have to do with a community strategic plan? Well, I had the opportunity to meet uh, the former CEO for Alan Mulaney. I actually took him over to Full Car to play golf. And it was in July. Those of you who are year round residents, you know what it does at 2 o'clock in July? It rains. So I came in and we sat there and we talked. And I got to know him. Fast forward 18 months later, he was retiring. He was being interviewed on one of the morning news programs. And he was asked, he said, uh, the interviewer said, okay, tell me, you had great success at Boeing, now at Ford. What's the key to your success? And of course, I had great team, but particularly now at Ford, I had a great plan. 
His plan, one team, one plan, one goal, where everybody in the company knew everybody else's goal, every department. Now I happen, as I said, I have a home up in Michigan and I was at my old club and I was sitting at the corner of the bar and I ran into a friend of mine, she's one of the lead in-house counsel for board. I said, Diane, tell me, I heard this interview, is that smoke and mirrors it sounded good? She said, Jack, I'm in legal. I can tell you every goal for finance, for manufacturing, for marketing, for human resources, et cetera, et cetera. And it really dawned on me that, you know, that's how a successful company runs. That's also how a successful uh, hospitality organization runs. Well, everybody knows what's going on. And I'm, again, I'm so glad you're here today because that drives us. One of the things we're going to be talking about, this is what we call the poster. Or remember I said the bronze plaque in some cases, they actually put it in the bronze. Where this was from uh, in, uh, in in uh, North Carolina, uh, Valentine Country Club. What was unique about this is the average age, unlike Florida, the youngest I've ever encountered, the average age of a member there was 43 years old. Now look at the vision statement to be the Carolina's premier family focused country. It drove what they did. They're not 80, they're 40, and obviously there's lots of kids running around. So it really drives, remember what I said before, it's not, not what's not important is what other clubs are doing, other communities, it's what you're doing and what's important to you. And we're going to talk about that. So, uh, we just want to make sure we get everybody on the same page. And uh, with it, part of the process, as I said, once a strategic plan is adopted by the board, it has to be part of the regular process of where you're constantly saying, how are we doing? Are we on target? If not, what do we need to do to get there? Atlanta Athletic Club, once a quarter, they normally have about a two-hour board meeting, and once a quarter, they start at an hour early, bring all the key management in, and go through the plan. I'm going to show you a sample action plan. They go through it to find out how they're doing. So um, here's another, I would tell you, one of the most important questions that uh, strategic planning endeavors to answer, particularly so here. What do we want our community and our club to be? What's our brand? What do our members look like now? Let's see, look around, right? Remember what I said, if the average age is 68 or 70 and the average age joining is 55 or 30, so there's, you know, there's, there's a difference between them. So what I like to do is, is go back to the members and residents who uh, moved in here who joined in the last two years and ask them five questions. How did you find out about them? What made you make your decision to join? Are we meeting your needs? If not, what do we need to do so? And oh, by the way, would you recommend Glen Eagle to a family member or a friend? It really tells us a lot of, of, about that. So we, we say, because we say, where do we want to be five and 10 years from now? What should our facilities and everything else look like? But what will our demographics look like then, right? And finally, we have to say, so what do we need to do to satisfy our current members and residents, yet still continue to attract new members and residents? Remember one thing in a community like yours, there is one metric that is very important that freestanding clubs do not have, called property values. You want your community to be a desirable community, but you want to be that fun place that people want to live, and, and it has a direct impact. So, this is the process that we will be going through here at Glen Eagle. Back in September, uh, the board approved the process. I've spent a lot of time reviewing a lot of information. I've toured all the facilities. Just really trying to get to know Glen Eagle. Even though I knew of it, uh, I didn't know it from the inside. Uh, here we are today with our town hall meeting. Uh, we'll be sending out a, a letter explaining the process. Uh, we have a conference call real soon because we will be conducting a member survey, a member resident survey. So we're working with a, a company called Club Benchmarking. It's 
but they specialize in developing the survey specific for Glen Eagle. Uh, that survey will go out in mid-November and it will be sent to both members and, and, and spouses or significant others if, if they're Thank <laughs> you.